Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a video real quick talking about how you can use ES6 to write your React components today. So let's get started. <laughs> so I'll just make um, real quick an ES6 React directory and I'll go inside of there and I'll have an index.html and an app.js. So our index.html is just going to look really basic ES6 and React. And we're going to want to compile to some kind of bundle script in the directory. And this bundle step will basically just allow us to take our ES6 code and convert it into ES5 code that can run in browsers today. And we can use that using a package called webpack. And so real quick, I'll just create a package.json and then I'll install webpack into it. And so all we need for Webpack is a um, webpack.config.js file, just telling it how it's going to do what it's going to do. And inside of here, all you need to put is module.exports and then this object. And this object is going to tell Webpack where to start, which is going to be our app.js uh, file, where to put whatever it compiles, and we're just going to tell it to go into the same directory with the file name bundle.js and so this is cool we have a basic webpack config file set up let's go ahead and try and write some super cool ES6 code so let's say we have some kind of message function and all this is going to do is return um, hello world <laughs> and I'll just log that out to console so we can go try and compile or do our build step with webpack and we'll get this module parse error. And it's just gonna tell us, hey, we have an unexpected token, and that just means that we need to convert this ES6 JavaScript into a format that Webpack understands, which is just, you know, ES5 JavaScript. And we can um, do that using loaders. And specifically, we'll use Babel loader. And we also need a Babel runtime for a later step. So we'll go ahead and install that again come back to our config file and we'll just specify this new key called module and module is going to give us a bunch of loaders and here we can specify inside of objects what files to test and here I'm just going to test for JavaScript files excluding our node modules directory that we have and for every JavaScript file that we encounter, we're going to do the following steps. We're just going, or sorry, we're just going to use the following loaders, which is Babel loader. We can pass in parameters to these loaders after the um, question mark, and we'll just turn on experimental. And I like putting in optional equals self-contained, and this just makes it re rely on the runtime as a module instead of including it in the bundle, which is kind of nice. And so now we'll run Webpack again. And we'll see, hey, we have this bundle.js folder. Let's see if anything fun is happening in the index.html file. Open up the console. And sure enough, we have hello world. So now we've taken our ES6, we've compiled it down into ES5 using this Babel loader. And now it works inside of the browser. So let's try and throw React into the mix. And while that's installing, I'll go ahead and use ES6 module syntax to require React. Let's try and make you know, a basic application using react.createClass. I'll make a very basic render function and we'll return div from React. And I'll turn my JSX syntax highlighting on. There we go. And now I'll just say tell React to oops <laughs> React.render we'll tell it to put the app let's do document.body. Sorry for all the boilerplate. Anyway, so now we'll run our build step again with Webpack. We're good to go, we'll refresh, and we have hello from React. Um, pretty awesome. <laughs> so now what's really cool is with the newest version of React, which is 0.13, which is currently in beta right now, we can actually write this entire component using uh, ES6 class syntax. And to get started doing that, we'll just have to install React, the beta version. Right now, obviously, eventually it'll be released and we'll be good to go. But right now, we're going to install the second release candidate for the 0.13 beta, and we'll save that. 
And while it's going in, so now we can say class app extends from react.component. And this allows us to write our app component in the same way that we did before, except using ES6 um, syntax. So now we can have that same render method on the class, tell it to return hello from ES6. Same thing, we'll bundle back up and we'll refresh the page. And now we have hello from ES6. So we've written our app component using the class syntax available to us using React 0.13, which will be really soon. And so another cool thing that we can do, uh, instead of using mixes, mixins, sorry, we can actually extend from other components. So let's say I'm going to make a very basic logger component. So this is also going to import React. We'll have the same class syntax where it extends from react.component. However, what this class is going to do is just edit component will mount and He'll just throw in a log statement, say logger logging Neutron JSX highlighted. And so this is all it does. And we'll just do export default logger. And with this statement now inside of um, our app.js, we can import logger from the components directory, specifically the logger component. And now instead of having app extends react.component, we can do app extends logger. So we'll bundle up real quick, refresh the, refresh the page, and we'll see that the logger is logging. Um, we can override component if we can override component behavior if we need to, just by taping it. And so we'll do you no know, app logging. And when we bundle it up, we see that this implementation has overridden what we extended from. If we wanted both pieces of functionality, we'll just call super. That component will mount and we'll bundle it up. And now we get both. So let's try and do, you know, a more interesting example. In ES6, let's try and make a counter component. It's going to extend from react.component again. And we'll have this render method. And all it's going to do is return some kind of count value. And we're just going to give it a button that's going to increment the count. So if we bundle this up, and try and run it, we'll see that app is undefined. Whoops, that's my bad. Anyway, so once I change it to counter and we refresh the page, we'll see cannot read property count of null. So we have a problem with this dot state. And so initially, or before we would have a get initial state method on our component, instead with ES6, we'll use the constructor function. This constructor, constructor function can set this dot state explicitly like this. And we see that the count value is equal to zero. But I think it'd be useful if we could have someone pass in some kind of initial count variable like this. And this would be able to access this like this, similar to how we did it before. And all we have to do to make this work is pass in props into our constructor function like this. And you can see that our count value is now at 10, which is the value I, I set in or put in. Um, we can get rid of that and even give this counter component a default um, prop value. And we'll just say initial count is up to zero. And now we don't even have to um, set anything in there. We just know, hey, in the default case, it's going to be zero. So obviously right now we're missing a very important fun piece of functionality, which is to actually increment when we click that. So let's add our click handler. And we'll just say, hey, this calls this dot increment. We'll write our function right here. And all this is going to do is set the state. So that count is equal to this dot state dot count plus one. And let's try this out. 
to refresh the page, try and click it, and we say we see um, cannot read property set state of undefined. So something's wrong with this here, and we can solve this two ways. Um, the first way is we can say this dot increment is equal to whoops this dot increment dot bind this. And if we bundle that, we see that this um, will make it work, and we'll actually have value to, or we'll finally have access to the this context. The second way that we can do this, if you prefer this way, is go straight into the onclick handler and just bind this value to this. And it works just the same. So that's about it. Those are some of the cool ways now that we can use ES6 to start writing React components, starting with React um, 0 0.13. Um, hopefully all of you really like this video. <laughs> and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.